All right, turn with me to Revelation chapter 5. And um, I'm going to try to get past this thing about <clears throat> uh, seeing. We talked about it a little bit last time, and we find that in verse 6. Uh, but we should read verse 5 and 6. And one of the elders saith unto me, well, let's see. I think we should go back to verse 2. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose its seals? No man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look on it. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the, the scroll, neither to look on it. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the scroll or the book and to loose its seven seals. And verse 6 is where we were shooting for the primary verse. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as though it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes and i just i want to stop right there because i want to focus in on this seeing thing again that we talked about last time um, because uh, because god's purpose is not just about removing our blindness and I think that that's a lot of times where we focus our, and, and, and if we focus our prayers there, and if we pro focus our requests there, then we're, we may never see what he wants us to see. We will just, you know, be focusing on not being blind, the negative side instead of the positive side. Um, and the answer is, to have new eyes, to have new eyes. And that's what this verse six, I think, is trying to communicate to us, that this lamb having seven eyes. Now, now you know, when you, when you consider what that would look like, you'd go, well, that's just weird, you know. Well, so is pretty much all the imagery in the book of Revelation, <laughs> but, uh, but it's not. I don't believe it's meant to be weird. I, don't, I really don't m believe that the book of Revelation is meant to be all this weird stuff. I think it is meant, as we've talked about, it is meant to communicate answers to the seven churches who have been going through these problems and, and suffering and struggling and even under attack of Satan himself and the mention of Satan in three, three of the seven churches. Um, and... Uh, <clears throat> And their, their prayers, what direction are their prayers going? You know, well, get us out of this, or, you know, get these people that are causing problems out of the church, or, you know, Lord, deliver us from the devil, or, Lord, you know, all these things. And, and God, uh, Jesus, through John, is trying to bring them on a whole new level, in a whole new sphere. And, um, and that would be more than um, just seeing, if you will, uh, more than just having our eyes opened. It would be having new eyes. In fact, we'll, you know, according to the scripture, we'll take it a, a step further. It would be having lamb eyes. Well, seven eyes, that automatically says it sees more than we see automatically says it's going to see from angles we never saw things before automatically says the lamb can see more than we can the lamb sees more angles of everything than than we have i was thinking about it i actually i was thinking about it on the way here when when uh, deb was driving this here driving me here and and thinking <clears throat> um you know i was thinking about 
my, my condition because most of you get to see me at my very best sitting up here. You see me under the anointing. You see me able to share Jesus. And you know, even all of you know, that boy, when the Spirit of God comes on you to share Jesus, you're the healthiest that you could ever be. You know what I mean? I mean, you just, you're just alive. And so I'm sure most of you think this is the way I look all the time at home. And that's why I don't let anybody but Robert and his... And, and the sun come out because, <clears throat> you know, I, I look bad. Anyway, so I was thinking about, you know, my condition, and I was remembering and reminding myself that I told the Lord last year around this time when I had had surgery and only, only been through the surgery, what, a couple of weeks or whatever, and uh, the trip came up to go to Holland, and all I could see, and this is the truth, and I still sort of tear up when I think about it, all I could see was the faces of those people, the faces of those from, in, from Belgium. They've just been pouring down from Belgium to come and to hear the word. And, and if you saw it, if you were there, if you, my Lord, saw what was happening, you would, you would really understand. I mean, it's a, it's a movement of the Lord. And um, for me not to show up means two years before, you know, and they're just so desirous. And I said, I can't do that. I can't. I cannot not show up. And so I just told the Lord, well, if by going I make myself worse because I don't give it time to heal and it does something else, then I'll live with it. And I, the reason why I was reminding myself of that in the car was because I, I re-injured again myself uh, a day or so ago and set it back pretty good and um, was forgetting what I had said to the Lord. <clears throat> and I, when I remembered, I'm fine because I did get to go. I did get to share the Lord and they did receive and it was all of God. Um, but uh, I was, uh, that made me flash over to what we talked about something recently was we talked about uh, Betsy in the concentration camps and their particular dorm had fleas and therefore the Gestapo, not the Gestapo, the guards there on that camp didn't go into there and therefore they could have, they could have prayer meetings and Bible sharings and all that kind of stuff. And all of a sudden my f mind flashed to, and what's funny is I wasn't even thinking about lamb's eyes as my mind flashed there, but what it went to was that when it's all said and done, you know, well, Lord, why did you make, uh, you know, the summer of 2011 so hot? You know, and he'll say, well, I did it because of this, and, and this created this situation or helped this situation, and it moved, da da da, da for, you know what I mean? All, he would have all of this explanation because he nothing happens randomly, you know. I mean, he knows what he's doing, and we don't. Can anybody say amen? <clears throat> and... Um, and so I was just like, oh, and then, then I, I said within myself, he sees from so many angles we don't see. And then I remembered the, the lamb's eyes and that, he, that, that assuredly, when you see from the lamb's perspective, you're going to have a greater perspective than being a cyclops. You know what a cyclops is? It's a one-eyed being. Just one eye. And that's kind of what we are in a certain sense because we're self-focused, we're focused on our own life, where we're at, that if, that if it was hot last year, that was just horrible. That's, you know, that's the only conclusion we can come, you know what I mean? We don't, we don't, we don't have enough eyes to see beyond ourselves. And um, so this, this situation of being gathered before the lamb that is slain and realizing the, the many views that only the lamb has. I mean, it doesn't say that about anybody else up there, you know. But the, the, the myriad of, of angles that he has of things. Um, let's see, let me just... Um, these eyes will, will replace our blindness, but it will be lamb's eyes. And it won't even just be, Lord, help me to see. Uh, to see with his eyes. Do you, do you see the difference? Well, I mean, 
I mean, I know we can, I know that in our head we can say yes, but in our heart at the same moment, can we just slip up a little prayer and say, you know, Lord, help me to see with lamb's eyes, not just to see, cause, cause, cause even when we pray, we'll say, Lord, help me to see, but we're so used to going by one or two eyes. Do you know what I'm saying? So we're even limiting the, the, the power and the, the influence of our prayers because we're not saying, Lord, help me see with lamb eyes. Because that, that includes all angles. That includes everything. And that's why I said we can all go, yeah, oh, praise God, you know, nod our heads knowingly to what's being said. But in our hearts, that, that we'd drop down to there and, and just say, Lord, let me see through his eyes. Lamb eyes, seven eyes, you know, a myriad of views of things. <clears throat> so... Um, to see with his eyes is to lose self as the central focus and most important, and as the central focus and as the most important object of concern. You see the victory, uh, as it talks about in, in Revelation 12, that the victory came and does yet come by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony and the fact that we love not our lives unto the death. Um, with his eyes, you're not self-focused, is what I'm trying to communicate. You love not your life to the death. That's, that's lamb's eyes. That is not human eyes. We want to save ourselves, you know. And um, to, see, to, to see that way and to be willing to overcome by his death and his bloodletting, and by our death, possibly. And to believe in that, it's got to be lamb's eyes. Uh, the change that happens <clears throat> uh, to the followers of the lamb is not an overthrow of evil and abuse, but to follow the lamb through it. Because you see things from the many angles of lamb life. And that's, that, you know, how do you explain that? I, see, I can't explain it because I don't see from all the myriad of angles that I need to. But how do you explain that when it's all said and done and all that seemed lost and all that seemed so hard and all that we laid down for the lamb, we could never see all of what that does. We could never see all of what letting Christ be self-giving through us can produce. We could never see all that in this, let's just say in this life. We'll use that terminology. And so, um, but there comes a faith. There comes a faith. Well, what faith are you talking about, brother? I'm talking about Galatians 2.20 faith. You know what I'm saying? Galat anybody, I, I'm not, that's not a random statement there. I, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live in this flesh, I live by that faith. I live by the faith of one who loves by giving himself. I hope all are settled back there in, in Skype land. <laughs> There's the faith he talks about. I live by his faith. I live by the faith of one who loves by giving himself for others. Now, only lamb's eyes can open our eyes to that beyond it being a doctrine of a, a holy doctrine of new creation fellowship or something. God forbid that these things become that. They, they become little idols. Oh, they're not big idols. You know, they're just little tiny ones, little tiny new creation idols. Let's not have them. I don't care what size they are, you know what I mean? And making, uh, having pet doctrines and pet scriptures instead of seeing the Lord. 
you know? And, uh, you know, it, it, it really has been the case that I have had more people respond and say, say things, write things, uh, email, text things about this class than any that I can remember for years and years and years and years. Just saying how much they're getting the Lord from it. Well, you know, most of you know me, but just to make it clear, you know, even though we're sharing this from a different angle, there is, I have no desire to say or, or let it be thought that this circumvents anybody else's views. I don't, I don't know anything. I mean, I, I want to know Jesus. And, and I do believe that what I'm sharing I have seen from the Lord, but it doesn't make me anything if I did get it from the Lord. It's like, I'm, you know, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're the messenger boy, and he hands you a message. You delivered. You're not supposed to go, yeah, I, I delivered that message. So I got that from the, you know, the head guy. You know, I don't know anything. I, I want to know. I am knowing, but I, I, you know, and I don't think that this is, even though people are truly being touched and moved and blessed, that doesn't reflect back on me. It reflects, you know, on two things. It reflects on the Holy Spirit who is so faithful to lift up Christ and it reflects on the hearts of those who are responding because their heart is turning to the Lord and I couldn't do that if I wanted to. I mean, I, I do want to, but I don't know how to turn your heart, you know. So all glory to the Lord. Amen. All glory to the Lord. Praise God. All right, so... Um, let me read that statement again. The, the change that happens to the followers of the Lamb is not an overthrow of evil and abuse, but to follow the Lamb through it because you see things from the many angles of Lamb life. Things in Revelation look bad until you see with Lamb eyes. Now, I, I'm sure I'll get into it in the next little subtitle here. But I, I have yet to be able to communicate what I saw coming out of the, the seven churches and all of their trials and all of the hard things and all of the questions because of the trials and, and uh, just, uh, just heavy laden with what happened. I mean, we're, you know, we're following, you know, we're following the Messiah and that things are getting worse. Where's the kingdom? Where's the glory? Where's all this stuff that's supposed to be happening right now? And, uh, and for them to come out of that and the way, the way the Lord brought them out of it and the way John brought them out of it was with this imagery of the lamb and here is the lamb and, and, and all these people, all of these nations, all of this huge multitude is shouting victory over this lamb that got slaughtered and did it in the right spirit and laid down his life and from that has come this universal eternal universal meaning uni as big as the universe and beyond eternal victory and they're standing there, if you will. Now, this is the way I pictured it. It was all this glow, everybody going, yes, life out of death. There's the proof. There's the reality. There's the hope. There's the, you know, and they're all like, what I picture is like, um, the, like the 1800s, you know, uh, living on the streets of London, you know, poor kids and, you know, uh, and they walk into the room and there's all this glorious worship and there's all this beauty and, and everything is lifted so far out of the dirtiness and the, the junk that they have been wrestling with. But they're sort of like, what is this? Or, or like, whoa. And, and there's just victory busting out of all of them. Because that guy, that lamb, laid down his life. And this is the result. And they're just going, glory to the lamb that was slaughtered. Because they, they understand, they really see it. 
And this group of the seven churches is kind of like a little group in the corner going, dude, really? Is this, you know, in other words, you, you kind of get a little picture what I, that they're sort of, they're, they're like, well, you know, maybe we kind of had the wrong angle of this, you know? I mean, they're not fully there yet. That's why it's going to take the whole book. But it, there's, it's their first foray into what appears to be defeat in, the, in chapter 2 and 3. What appears to be the enemy is winning. Boom! This is what it all ends with. The lamb wins. It's a, it's a glorious win, but through faith Amen. in life out of death. That's right. I mean... I, if you just put yourself in that situation, best way to do it is go back and read those, those seven churches, those letters of the seven churches, and then step into the scene, which is basically what happens. And you just go, is this a foretaste of what's to come for us? And the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah. This is the first taste for them to be able to realize that where they're at is right where they need to be at. Even though it seems so hard, it's right that the Lord is in it. The Lord allowed it. The Lord, not just, you know, he didn't just allow it. He brought it about. You say, now, Brother Randy, let's not. You know, go, you know, God is good and the, and the devil is bad. I, I challenge you to go through the book of Revelation and find out how many times God unleashes junk all over everybody. You know, you get a little bit, honestly, just, just write it down if necessary. You'll get a little bit, you know, a chapter and less than a half of the beast causing trouble. And the most, all of it is God unleashing stuff, you know? Even when the beast is, and, the, and, the, and, and he made war with the saints and he overcame them and killed them, it says, and it says God gave him power to do it. You're going, see, if you don't understand these early pictures, you're, you know, you're not going to understand what that's leading to. Because we would go, no, 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 this book of Revelation is wrong. God wouldn't have given him power to defeat us. We gave power. He, I'm sorry, didn't he give, Jesus stood before Pilate and, and, and he said, well, are you a king in this and that? And he didn't, whatever it was, and he didn't answer. And Pontius Pilate, the Roman procurator, the Roman governor says, Answers thou me not? No, know ye not that I have power to take your life or to let, it, let you live? And Jesus finally does speak up and says, you have no power at all except to be given of God. Hey, Jesus isn't freaking out going, yeah, I know you know, but God will get you. You know? God will put a bubble around me. You know? Well, that's spiritually what a lot of Christians think God's going to do. Something like that. They don't see the plan. They don't see, they don't see the plan and they don't see the land. Amen. I'm going to write a poem right now. <clears throat> anyway. So, uh, so every, honestly, for the seven churches and the first two chapters, everything looks bad. But as they proceed through, the bad only gets worse, but their view of what's real gets greater. I mean, it's like incredible. The moment, it's so funny because if you just read the book plain, it's like, man, this is bad, bad, bad. But if you read it with lamb's eyes, yes. you can literally feel the momentum right. gaining in this yes. book because they, it's like, it's like this, this, uh, flatbed truck going through town and more and more jumping on the lamb's, you know, vehicle. And they're going, all right, we're going we're gonna to do it this way. And then again, you see the manifestation of that victory at the end, but the victory is in their hearts when they are in tune 
by, by the eyes of the Lamb, by the heart, by the spirit of the Lamb, they're in tune with God and saying, hey, we're with you in this. We're with you in this. <clears throat> All right. So let me see. Take a drink. Tell a joke. Cast out a demon. <laughs> if you didn't learn anything. <laughs> yeah. All right, my next subtitle in, in the area that we're talking about is experiencing victory in the midst of defeat. Is it possible? Experiencing victory? Well, first of all, isn't that sort of, wait, victory in the midst of defeat? Well, how can you have victory in the midst of defeat? Because you're in defeat, so it's not victory. Well, I would, I would say the best thing is not to try to think too hard. You'll hurt yourself. <laughs> yes, let's just go with what the Lord's trying to tell us here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and read here a little bit. John had been speaking and sharing this vision of the slain lamb in the midst of the throne with these poor oppressed churches. They are now seeing themselves as before the throne, worshiping and honoring the victory of one who won the victory through death. That's different. You gotta, you gotta realize they've been brought into this room and it's, while it's a big shock, they end up worshiping him too. But what are you worshiping? You know, if somebody kind of poked him, you know, one of the angels, you know, that's, that's uh, giving John the tour, you know, because there's one giving him the tour. One of the others come over and pokes him and goes, you know, they're going, yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you worshiping? Well, I'm honoring the victory of one who won the victory through death. Because they are. They are. That's what, you know. Okay, let the realization sink in. You, you but, you know, these guys too. Wait a minute. You know, the angel could say, anybody can come in here, lift their hands and start shouting. Are you clear on why this glorious worship is happening? Because that one and that one alone chose the way of death to bring about the victory. Now, and I, I, if I was that angel, I'd punch him again and say, now, are you, are you willing to go that way or are you just shouting because everybody else is? You know? And I think that maybe these seven churches are looking at it at this stage and they're sort of in, but it's going to take more drastic more drastic than what they're going through. I mean, they're going to have to see bigger beasts than the beasts that are oppressing them at the, that moment, okay? And, you know, God is gracious. God is gracious. You know, we always go, oh, you know, I love the, I love the springtime, you know. Well, in our, you know, the springtime in our spiritual life, we love that too, you know. But then when it's death time, we're like, oh. You know, I've, I'm, I've lost all my color, and I've lost all, you know, and it's just hard, and the, it's cold, and it's hard to get through this, and, you know, on and on and on and on. And, you know, I realize that, that God loves us in all of the seasons, and he loves all the seasons, because they all have purpose. I mean, they, they're all, it's, you know, it's like there's not a season outside of God's seasons. We always think they're here. We go, I'm in the season that's outside of the seasons. No, you're not. <laughs> you, know, you are right where God wants you, but you're freaking out because you're not with God and probably not with him because you don't like the season you're in and you want to be in a happy season. You know, I'm going to go to a happy season, happy place, you know what I'm talking Mm. 
All right, so. Um, <clears throat> they're now seeing themselves as before the throne, worshiping and honoring, honoring the victory of one who won that victory through defeat. There is joy among them instead of defeat, and they sense it. Do you understand from where they were in those, those two chapters of how dark it was? Now there, there is, uh, what was the wording? There is joy among them instead of defeat, and yet their circumstances haven't changed a bit. I guess you'd call that victory in the midst of defeat. Oh, that's why I chose that title. That's probably good. Okay, there, um, let's see. John will continue to give them visions of encouragement. Okay, vision. What kind of encouragement is, gonna, is he going to give them? He's going to show them horrible beasts and terrible situations on the earth. And, and in reality, not, not in heaven as we think, but in the heaven of our heart and minds, you are there with the Lord. Whatever floods roll over the top of you, whatever poundings of the waves come upon you, and that, that all sounds great, but folks, wait till you're there, you know. And then go, okay, I, I thought that was pretty cool during the class, but now that I'm there, I don't know if I want to go this way. You know what I mean? So, well, I understand that too. <clears throat> um, but, there, but But let me just word it like this, and that is we know John was caught up there, but... It doesn't say they were, so they're still down on the earth, and yet this is written for them, so in a sense, they're still in the thing, but they're also experiencing the imagery of God in their situation, and it's awakening hope. Yes. It's awakening a, a sense of victory, even though, you know, because we're waiting for the Lord to give us the victory by turning the defeat, and yet... You know, we're all of a sudden we're going, you know what, I sort of feel, the, and you know what, that's going to be just a wonderful thing that the rest of these, these pages begin to, to spell out for us. <clears throat> okay, let me uh, not talk too much on that. <clears throat> uh, in the rest of the book, John presents much worse situations than they are presently in. Again and again, he paints a picture of the saints in victory, even while in oppression. You'll see this. You'll see that it's just, oh, praise God. <laughs> um, for example, in Revelation eleven fifteen, it says, uh, uh, it's, uh, let me just say it, in Revelation eleven fifteen, when being one with Christ crucified, they declare that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God, even when it seems that the beast is winning right there. I mean, you read the surrounding scriptures, and it's like, the beast is winning. And then and this, this shout goes up. The kingdom's... Now, okay, now, let, me just, let me just give you the, the regular reading of that without any thought of what we've been talking about here. Okay, I'm reading the book of Revelation, and I'm waiting for Jesus to whoop up on the beast, and I'm waiting for the big victory, okay? All right, so I'm reading, and the beast is just pounding, and he's doing all this stuff, and then all of a sudden, there's this shout of glory for the kingdoms of our, uh, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our God and of of the Lamb. This 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 shout goes up. So then you're going, okay, praise God. It's at this point the storyline is going to change, and God's going to bring it down, baby. But it doesn't happen, and you go, you know, it goes back to more junk happening. And you go. Then why didn't you shout that a little early? Well, I'm just I'm just thinking. You know, I mean, wouldn't that be the right question as you're reading? You go, 
I think he shot it out a little early because I think some of the worst pages are yet to come. And we're only in 11 here. There's <laughs> 10 more. <laughs> so, so if the, I mean, if, if, if you're reading this in a sequence and you're expecting, you know, but he's not giving you a sequential thing from defeat to victory. He's giving you the, a, a, a basic scenario of beast brutality and the response of those who are experiencing this throne thing. Of, and what are they? They're not shouting because everybody's shouting. They're not shouting because it's a beautiful setting. They're not shouting because, uh, because he is victorious. They're shouting because he did it the right way. He laid down his life. And that's the key. And that's going to be our key. Can you hear everybody shouting? And that's going to be our key. And it, what a great key to hand them right here at the beginning. And that's going to be our key. So then later on, and so we go through them, the beast, da, 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 and then all of a sudden, yeah, da, 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 and then it goes back to the bin, and you go, well, what, what about I'm shouting? And ah, horrible stuff. And then, yeah, and, you know, and you just kind of go and, when are we going to just like really win here? Well, the victory is there. Can anybody really see what I'm saying? They're, they're experiencing victory in the midst of defeat. <laughs> I mean, they are, and, they're, and, it, and they're, they're already in it. And so the beast slams into them and slaughters a bunch of them. And the beast made war with the, the saints and, and, and was given power over them. And he overcame them. And then it says, and he killed them. Yay! The shout goes up again. The glory of God coming on. <laughs> Look, if, if you're going to leave it on, why don't you get the hallelujah chorus or something? That would have been perfect right at that moment. It, hallelujah. <clears throat> anyway, um, I hope that you didn't get too far off of what was just being said because that's, that's the theme of what we're going to want to get into here. Let me just let me make sure here. Um, <clears throat> so, they declare that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God, even when it seems the beast is winning. But it is that winning that the beast is doing that is the impetus for their death so that life can come out of death. They're not freaking out over it. They're going, bring it. This is, this is our answer. Okay. I didn't get quite the, yeah, that I saw there in chapter 5 where around the, the lamb, you know, yeah, yeah, glory. And it's like, you know, it worked for Jesus, but, <laughs> you know, I just rather Jesus like do it all and I not have any part in it. Okay. All right. You are his body, right? Well, guess what? I mean, if Jesus walks through that door, you walk through it because you're his body. You're going, no, no, you just go, I can't, you're my body. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, you know, no, well, just come out of me and fly around the room. I'll just lay here. You know, he's going, no, nope, whatever I'm going to go through, you're going to go through. We're in this together now. And that's the problem, folks. That is the problem is he's in it with us, but are we in it with him? Really? That's the question. But you see, the, the seven churches were not when this thing started, not in the second and third chapter. They're not in it with him because they don't really know what, what all this means. But when it gets to the end, they're more than in it with him. They're bride. They're bride. The spirit and the bride are together. And what's funny is what, down there in the end, down in the very end, the last chapter there, 
you get that wonderful phrase again, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Well, that's what they were starting with. Every one of them got that little thing in the beginning. But there's a difference. They're now the bride, and they're saying with the Spirit, bring it, Jesus. Come on. All right. So uh, they do not mourn the apparent glory and greatness of the beast, for they have seen the true way of greatness, and they sing a song about it. It's a, it's a new song. Glory to the Lamb that was slain. See, that is a new song, isn't it? You don't hear that song much. Right. Not too many people singing that song. That's right. Not too many people singing that song. It's so new they haven't heard it yet. Yes. <laughs> and, right. and yet in reality, it's been since Calvary. Yeah. It, it's been since, the, uh, you know, eternity past because that's who God is. Selfless, self-giving. Okay? So... Uh, but that's, you know, I said they don't mourn because of the apparent victory and glory that the beast is getting. They're seeing it, and they're, the, instead of going, oh, you got to turn this. you got to turn our captivity. you got to turn this bad situation. They're in a completely different place spiritually, and they're singing to the slain lamb going, you're worthy for thou was slain. By your blood. By, well, you know, what is, what is that? I mean, you know, by, you know, your glory, glory, by your blood, you have redeemed. What does that mean? Does that mean, okay, Jesus has a little, a little bottle and a little tube, and he puts some blood in there, and he goes, okay, this, this magic blood Is going to do it for you? No, no. If that was all, if that was it, he wouldn't have had to die. Just a little, you know, drain off a little bit. Yeah, you know, bop it and keep it coming. And, hey, you know, that's right. And every, you know, and, but you see, they weren't going. Thou hast, a, you know, a transfusion. It says, thou was slain, and by thy blood, you died, and you didn't just die. They won over you. They slaughtered you, and yet they didn't, because here you are, and where are they? Well, that's going to take faith, isn't it? You're going to have to learn to live by the faith of the Son of God who loves by giving himself for us. That's how he loves. That's how he loves. Praise God. <clears throat> so it is the way of the lamb that they're singing this song to and, 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 and honoring the true way of greatness. In Revelation 5.10, they sing a new song because they rule the earth by a priesthood which continually offers the lamb. And that's what it says, that uh, thou hast made us a kingdom of priests unto our God. Okay, well... You know, you can take that any number of ways. You can say, okay, well, way down at the end when it's all over with, he's going to make us a, a, a kings and priests, and it's going to be pretty cool because, you know, he's going to make all Christians kings and priests, and we're going to get to rule over... Can't, well, we can't rule over kings and priests because that's everybody. Well, who are we going to be <laughs> ruling over now? <laughs> <laughs> well, first thing is, hopefully you'll be ruling over your self-life. Oh, yeah. That'd be nice. <laughs> For a change. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but, but instead, they're rejoicing over that <clears throat> because... We are going to rule the earth as priests which continually offer the lamb to God. You know, I, I'm just going to say this. 
I, I, you know, y'all are going to hate what I'm about to say, many of you that have been here for a good long while. Lord's really been sharing with me a lot on the book of Hebrews. <laughs> a lot. And, and, on the, and on the feasts. Is anybody familiar with us? Like, <laughs> but I'm telling you, he's just pouring again, again. And uh, uh, this glorious reality that, you know, and I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'll just say this. You know, when it talks about drawing near, like let us draw near. Anybody familiar with that in Hebrews? Let us draw near. He's not talking to Christians. He's talking to priests. He is. He's talking to priests. Anyway, we'll, we'll get into that. And how long am I going to be alive here on this earth? Because this doesn't seem like it's going to stop anytime soon. All right. Well, we'll stop a few minutes early so that uh, we can start a few minutes early so that people with kids don't have to wait long, around too long. So let's go ahead and take a break.